AMD Ryzen 9 7950X and 7950X 3D. Both are top of the line CPUs, both featuring that 2 CCD design with 16 cores and 32 threads. But at 100 euros more, I really hope that that 3D memory has something to show for. Similarly to other 3D Zen 4 chips, the 7950X 3D has a lot of differences once you get into the fine print. Compared to the 7950X, we lose 300 MHz on the base clock, get a much lower TDP, but on the other hand, we flat out double the L3 cache. However, fine print. In the two chips that we got, differences started to show really quick, leaving every BIOS setting on default and enabling Expo on a single core Cinebench run or 7950X managed to keep it up to 5.6 GHz, which is 100 MHz below official spec. The 7950X 3D on the other hand, that one managed to keep it up to 5.65 GHz, so that's really interesting. But on all core Cinebench run, the differences just switched, where the 7950 kept half of its cores at 5.1 GHz and the other half on 4.9, the 7950X 3D kept them at 4.9 and 4.8, respectively. Everything by design, of course, 3D vCache and stuff, but it already prepares us to what will come in the benchmarks. But before that, let's talk consumption and cooling, because that's an interesting one. Because during the Cinebench All Core runs, the 7950X 3D consumed only 143 watts of total package power, where the regular 7950X consumed a whopping 226. Of course, this is without any kind of optimization and flat out, out of the box, but in a scenario like, like this, the list of potential coolers for a 7950X 3D is significantly bigger than the one of a regular 7950X, even if the TJ Maxx of a 3D chip is 6 degrees lower. With these two points already given to the X3D, let's get to the synthetic benchmarks. Cinebench. On a single core workload, we will see why I highlighted that below spec clock speed so much in the beginning. Although it shouldn't be like that, our specific units showed that sometimes a 7950X 3D performs better than a 7950, 2% to be exact. In multi-core, this changes again to what it should have been from the beginning on. Switching over to PC Mark 10, where the non-3D chip wins again. And this behavior pretty much continued across all types of non-gaming related benchmarks. PC Mark 10, minus 1, CPU Z, minus 3 in both, single and multi. And for CPU profile test, we can even see how this scales up. Using a single thread, we saw a fractional win for the 3D chip. And at two threads, the same thing. But as soon as a second core is used, the 7950X starts to take the lead. And this lead becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and maxes out at 9% once all of the cores are utilized. But that was only purely synthetic. Let's get to a rendering type of work. In Blender, all scenes saw the same hit giving the crown to the 7950X, encoding a 5 minutes H.264 video into H.265 using Handbrake took 8% longer when using a 3D chip, and in Corona 10 we saw about 4% less rails. So far, just like we saw it on the 7700X versus the 7800X 3D comparison, the X3D chips are not good workers compared to a non-3D counterpart. The only outlier being Passmark, which registered a 2% increase going from regular to 3D. And of course, every single core oriented benchmark, but that was kind of foreseeable given that our particular 3D chip runs a bit faster on a single core, but that shouldn't be like that. It, it just boosts better in our setup. So let's finally get to the category in which 3D chips should actually shine. Gaming. We started off easy using 3D Mark's Time Spy. Then we saw a small increase of about 1% in the CPU score. But then came CSGO and similarly to the 7800X 3D, CSGO doesn't like cash. With hits up to 26% in the 0.1 lows, the overall score looks worse, but the 1% lows look a bit better at plus 11%. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, except for minimum FPS, we saw nothing but a positive evolution, and the two most important values, 
1% low and average, saw a 20 and 8% jump respectively. On Far Cry 6, the difference was just as good, with 16% better averages and 22% better 1% lows. And yes, 0.1% lows are over 100% better, but 0.1% is, is a brutal metric. It, if it stutters once, it's going to be a huge difference. And the same thing is happening in Rainbow Six Siege. The average min and 1% low won a bit, with 1% low being even at plus 19%, which is a lot. But then again, minimal status for every run using the 7950X results in a plus 104% performance increase in the 0.1% lows. But again, 0.1% lows are really brutal. In the last game, things switched a bit. Overall, the 7950X 3D performed significantly better than the 7950X, plus 39 on average, plus 46 in minimum, plus 33 on max, and plus 24 on the 1% lows. But for the 0.1% lows, there the 3D chip stuttered on each run, resulting in a negative 17%. If we have a look at all of the numbers generated by the 7950X 3D relative to the 7950X, we can see exactly the same evolution we saw going from a 7700X to a 7800X 3D. However, compared to the other comparison, things are not as severe. On average, we saw an 8% reduction in working or like performance workloads going from a 77 to 7800X 3D. Going from a 7950 to the 3D chip changed that to being only a negative 2% reduction. For gaming related things, we averaged all the numbers except for the 0.1% lows because that's just too brutal of a metric. But ignoring that one number, for every game we saw a 16% increase going 7800X 3D instead of a 7700X. But for the Ryzen 9 category, the bump in performance became only 13%. 13% still being a lot, just don't, don't get me wrong on this one, but it's just not as much. But even with these random average numbers thrown out, the end image remains the same. If it is a working rig, the 7950X will be slightly better, but if it's a gaming PC, then the 7950X 3D will be quite a lot better. However, one thing I also want to emphasize here is cooling-wise, the two Ryzen 9s are a different thing. Out of the box, at stock settings, the 7950X is close to uncoolable, whereas the 7950X 3D isn't that hot at all. Something you might factor in if the 13% performance increase for gaming seems too small for that 100 euro increase that you need to pay if you want to go 3D over the regular one. But that's for you to determine. For us, the picture is complete. 7950X, 2% better at working. 7950X 3D, 13% better at playing. Anyway, I think this should be it for today. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your store for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to get a second fire extinguisher because it's dangerous to benchmark a 7950X and only have a single one on the wall. Better be safe, better have two. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at the video where we determined how big the cooler of a 7950X 3D has to be to be 100% sure that it doesn't have no throttle. It's a lot less than the regular 7950X. Oh, what? Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.